Um, up next, we've got uh, Nageshwara Sastri, who is a software engineer at the IBM Linux Technology Center in India, um, who has an extensive background in Linux test development. Uh, he'll be speaking to us today on Linux testing made better with data. Um, due to the uh, constraints of the time slot, um, we're going to ask that you keep your questions to the mi uh, Kernel Miniconf BOF channel on Venulus, um, and that way uh, we'll be able to get to them after the talk is over. Uh, Nagwesthara, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, I'll, I'll start presenting. Hi, all. Uh, warm welcome to the session named uh, Linux Testing Made Better with Data. This is Nageshwara from uh, Linux Technology Center, IBM India. Data is fuel to any product transformation. Any useful insights derived from data helps in reducing unnecessary work, doing things much faster, with more accuracy and efficiency. The objective of this talk is to present how to utilize the data collected from the next testing process. So um, for the next couple of minutes, I'll take you through the agenda that is uh, the problem statement, what do we aim to achieve, how did we achieve this, and some results. Here is the problem statement. Current uh, regression test feeds um, are static. What I meant by static here? Regression test suites defined in continuous regression uh, framework, that is CR, they are not going to change dynamically according to the patch or patch set what we wanted to test. And turnaround time for one iteration uh, of running these regression test suites ranging from three hours to 12 hours at this moment, based on the regression test suites you select. And we are not answering uh, some of the questions at this moment. How well we tested a particular piece of code? What's the code coverage percentage? And what is the code coverage efficiency of a test case? Which part of the code is not having test cases? Turnaround time for uh, the patch set already discussed. So um, with all these problems, myself and uh, Gitika, an intern, uh, we started solving this. What do we aim to achieve here? So, for a particular patch or patch set, run only the required test cases. This improves turnaround time for the test cases uh, results to be published. And we have confidence that we are not going to miss any known bugs. Like, and uh, we are going to create a um, dynamic test suite um, and give insights to the testers. Like, what are the areas of the source code need more test cases? coverage efficiency of the test case. This helps what test cases need to be improved and what are the new source files are added. By that, testers can write new test cases. This whole process can save lots of systems as well as eliminates time. Linking the test cases to the source code um, is done by running the test cases and collecting the source code coverage. This data helps in deriving many useful insights with very less complexity. Okay, um, before jumping into the actual project, uh, I want to cover uh, some of the uh, method what we used here. So uh, there are many different methods which reduce the test cases, but out of which we picked up the coverage based method. Using this method, the reduction rate of test case can reach up to 99%. Though the number of test cases are reduced from thousands to a couple of tens, there is no reduction in fault finding capacity. The procedure of this method has two simple steps. That is calculate the code coverage and take the decision based on the code coverage value. Based on the code coverage value, we are going to take the decisions like what to do with the test case when the code coverage is at a particular value. These decisions help in creating the required dynamic uh, test suit creation and prioritizing the test cases, eliminating the redundant test cases. And there are uh, many other methods uh, from research or from the industry, like program slicing, genetic algorithm, greedy algorithm, fuzzy logic, hybrid method, clustering. All these methods um, take more time to implement. They are complex have less fault detection capabilities, needs time to train models. And some of uh, the methods need more experimentation to customize. So, 
how did we achieve this so here is the uh, overview of the whole project it divided into two different parts creation of the databases that is source and then the test and then passing the patch or patch set by that we are going to get the required output so first um, the source database creation for the source database creation we used c tags that is a um, tool which helps in aiding the code maintenance so this c tags creates an index file um, after running on the linux source code then parsing this c um, index file what we uh, picked up is the function name and then the file name and then stored it in the database then um, the test case uh, database so here what we are doing is for each test feed run each test case and collect the functional coverage of the test cases then this data is parsed um, the tool used here is the gcow tool so the data from the gcow tool is parsed and put into the database with uh, different fields like uh, the file name and then the function name along with the coverage and then the test case by that we can link the test cases with uh, the source code and um, out of these two this uh, takes more time the test database creation takes more time uh, and this is the key for all the insights what we are going to draw from it and then uh, we are going to pass the patch uh, or patch set from here we are going to extract the file names uh, which are modified or added using this patch then we are going to check whether these files are present in the source database or not why this is important because um, test we need to inform the testers about the new file when the file from the patch set is not available here then that means it is a new file and then the tester will be informed about uh, the addition of new file from the patch and he can prepare the test cases for that and in the case of the existing file we are going to query the database and then retrieve the test cases that needs to be run and then uh, given as an output the whole method uh, explained we automated using jenkins and then uh, after preparation of the two databases like source and then uh, test we simply pass the patch url um, to the job and we get output uh, as the what test cases need to be run here i'll show you the source database schema just we have uh, the tag that um, and here is uh, the example uh, record uh, from the source database function name uh, colon the file name and then uh, here is the test database schema here we are uh, taking the tag coverage percentage and then the test name uh, the tag will look like uh, the example record will look like this the file name colon uh, the function name coverage percentage and then the test case name okay we have the data how we are going to identify the redundant test cases uh, by looking at um, a particular tag uh, with file name dot c and then the function name and then if you see the core coverage percentage for a particular test case uh, based on uh, the data here we are going to identify the redundant test cases in this case uh, example if you see all these test cases are having 85 percentage approximately with the exit vmux ops function so uh, to cover um, 85 percentage no need to run all these test cases but simply run one test case is sufficient like that we can eliminate the redundant test cases that saves time okay how to know what test cases to be improved okay querying for a particular tag uh, like file name uh, dot c and then the function name with the highest code coverage along with the test case name will give uh, the test case is covering that particular function at what level so based on the number we are going to uh, take the decision of improving that particular test case and after uh, improving the test case next time also we can see how much uh, the test case got improved uh, in terms of the code coverage okay here are the uh, results i have 
we uh, in our environment uh, we have approximately 1000 test cases and after eliminating all the redundant test cases um, we figured out like okay 129 test cases are uh, necessary to get the same code coverage as uh, we are getting it for the 1000 test cases so no need to run the 1000 test cases for so many hours by simply running 129 test cases will give the exact same code coverage and uh, from uh, observing important uh, files, uh, like some we have picked up some 673, and then out of which 361 files having 54 percentage of code coverage, um, uh, with 100 uh, percent of code coverage, with the K self test uh, that is kernel self test, and then avocado test. Um, so um, there is no improvement uh, for uh, these files or uh, the test cases which are, are running to cover. And then um, we have a 312 files out of 673. Um, the core coverage is ranging from 96% to 4%. So these are the files or test cases related to them are important to uh, for the uh, improvement or prioritizing the test cases, etc. Um, so we have the disclaimer uh, chart here and the message of what I wanted to give here is with careful collection and analysis of data, we can get more useful insights by that we can make uh, Linux testing better. So we should make a deliberate practice of collecting data and methods to analyze the same by that we can get more useful insights to make uh, the Linux better. Uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity to speak at Linux World Conference. If you have any questions, we can take now. Um, we do have a couple of minutes before the uh, time slot ends. So if anyone does have any questions, uh, please post it in the Tux Theatre chat. Okay, it doesn't sound like we have any questions uh, right at the moment. Um, if anyone has anything they'd like to uh, ask that they think of later, uh, head, head on over to the Kernel Miniconf BOF channel, um, which you can join on the left-hand side of um, Venulus and ask your questions there. Actually, we just had a question come in. Um, question from Michael, is there any way we can measure path coverage rather than line coverage? Okay, uh, I haven't explored uh, that way because um, this is the kind of POC I have done. Um, we have uh, taken the functional coverage, uh, not the path coverage, but we can uh, definitely uh, work for that. Okay, it doesn't look like we've got any more questions. Um, so uh, thank you, Nagesra, uh, for your talk today. And if anyone has further questions, head on over to the Kernel Miniconf BOF channel and ask it there. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, we'll be taking a 10 minute.